I'm James, 45, and I lead a solitary life, focused on nurturing my own business. Despite my calculated demeanor, I'm compelled to share the most monumental and foolish blunder I've ever committed. Throughout my life, I've harbored a fear of expressing my emotions, deeming it a sign of weakness, a belief instilled in me since childhood. In recent times, I've found solace in browsing the internet, stumbling upon various shared experiences that have emboldened me to disclose my own. Here in this virtual space, where anonymity reigns and identities are concealed, I feel compelled to unburden myself. For privacy's sake, I've altered the names of all involved. Approximately 18 months ago, I underwent a divorce with my ex-wife, Avery, a woman whom I've always cherished and continue to hold dear. Avery stood by me through thick and thin. And as my financial success grew, so did the ease of our lives. However, my relentless pursuit of business growth consumed me, ultimately leading to the demise of our marriage. Our disagreements were few, predominantly revolving around her grievances of neglect, which I callously brushed aside. Despite her longing for a child, I stubbornly insisted on postponing parenthood, a decision that fractured our bond irreparably. The pivotal moment arrived when I callously admitted my reluctance to have children, a declaration that shattered any hope of reconciliation. Though I yearned to implore her to stay, my prideful silence prevailed, and I let her slip away, a decision I now deeply regret. My ego, a formidable barrier to communication, prevented me from voicing my true sentiments. I often pondered Avery's swift remarriage and pregnancy following our separation, plagued by suspicions of infidelity and questioning the authenticity of her love for me. Despite the temptation to delve into the truth, I refrained, realizing the futility of such inquiries. The wealth I amassed suddenly felt hollow, driving me to seek distraction in the company of other women a habit I never indulged in before. Compelled by bitterness and spite upon learning of Avery's pregnancy, I hastily entered into a marriage of convenience with Evelyn, a woman whose youthfulness belied her age. Yet, beneath the veneer of vindication, I grapple with a profound sense of remorse for the irreparable damage inflicted upon a love once cherished. She appeared young and worked as a part-time model in her 20s. Evelyn's 14-year-old daughter, Victoria, was born to her boyfriend when she was younger. She had raised Victoria as a single parent, and she tended to have affluent older men, also known as stupidaddies. I'd spent a couple of nights with Evelyn after meeting her at a charity auction. She was one of the event hosts looking for a new man following a breakup. My marriage to Evelyn was governed by a few restrictions that I had made abundantly apparent to her. She was meant to be a trophy wife, accompanying me to public occasions and acting as if we had a wonderful functional family marriage. She did not want to work after marriage, so I informed her that she would be responsible for domestic tasks. I assured Victoria that I would provide her with all she needed and I made it clear that our marital bond would be sexual rather than emotional. I encouraged Evelyn to closely follow the regulations if she and Victoria wanted to reside in my house, and she agreed. The wedding event was fairly low key, and we didn't have much time to get to know each other beforehand. I tried to connect with her daughter, but she wasn't interested. So I decided to go about my business without bothering her. Initially, Everything went according to plan. Avery called to congratulate me on getting married. I had known Avery for many years, so the undertones of pain in her congratulatory message were unmistakable. Despite achieving my desired outcome, a sense of fulfillment remained elusive. Accompanying Evelyn to my business functions, she effortlessly commanded attention, adorned in opulent jewellery and exquisite attire I provided. Her captivating presence garnered admiration, and we were often the focus of attention. Envy and other male counterparts were evident, and the overall ambience validated our facade of marital bliss. Compliments on our chemistry abounded, 
and we portrayed the image of the perfect couple, eliciting smiles and laughter. However, behind closed doors, the facade crumbled. As I lay beside Evelyn, reminiscing about my past with Avery, I attempted to discern the habits and behaviours of Evelyn and her daughter during our limited interactions at home. Evelyn's domestic skills left much to be desired. Hence, I enlisted the services of a seasoned chef to manage our culinary needs. Their leisure time was predominantly spent on social media platforms, creating content and engaging in digital activities. Victoria often returned late from school and mother and daughter frequently indulged in shopping excursions. Over time, they began hosting gatherings at our home, which, albeit unvoiced, unsettled me. Gradually, I found solace in immersing myself in work, returning home solely for meals and rest. I observed their inclination towards consuming pseudo-feminist content, which, while advocating for gender equality, fostered a narrative of disdain towards men. Attending one of their gatherings, I witnessed conversations saturated with animosity towards the male gender, marked by disparaging jokes and tales of infidelity. I didn't particularly enjoy connecting with the mother-daughter duo. But one day we got into a heated dispute about the philosophies of the videos they were watching and promoting. The very next day, I noticed that the items had been thrown and shattered around the house. Evelyn justified her fury by claiming that men would not listen to women's voices otherwise. She began shouting at the top of her lungs, and I had to raise my voice above hers to convey my message. I informed her that I didn't care about her fury or her tone, and that I wanted the mess cleaned up before I got home. When I returned home that same day and discovered that the house was still a mess with no tasks completed, all of my bedrooms were closed, with Ryanan in her bedroom and Evelyn in ours. So I knocked on the bedroom door. Evelyn suggested I sleep on the couch today. There was no food left for me, and they had thrown what was meant for me away. I was irritated by their behaviour, and I didn't even have a change of clothes, so I was exhausted and it was too late to fight. I stayed awake all night, wondering if I'd made the correct decision. Everything I did at that time looked ridiculous, but I had to go with it. I couldn't get the roof off Victoria and Evelyn's heads, you know. I also couldn't take the shame of another failed marriage. I got up the next morning and headed to work. Evelyn refused to unlock the door, and I became sleepy and groggy. I returned home later in the evening to discover my house in full disarray. There were no chores completed, an unpleasant odour persisted, and there was nothing to eat. They told the kitchen to only cook for two people, and they ate before I came. I sought an answer from Evelyn, but she sat on the couch and claimed she couldn't hear me. Victoria told me that I had to do the duties, and that I couldn't expect her mother to clean for me when it was clearly my home. She gave me a lengthy spile on how males don't perform housework and rely on women for fundamental needs. Their bravado astounded me, you know. I felt compelled to give them both a stern reality check. I first told Victoria off because she refused to clean, even if her life depended on it. I told them that I worked my buttocks off all day so they could shop and get their nails done. And I assured them I never objected to anything all I want is for Evelyn to keep the house clean. I made it clear that if they had an issue with it, they might leave. I walked into my bedroom and went to sleep. The next day, I came home from work to find that my house's locks had changed. Ah, that's correct. Evelyn would not let me into my own home. It turns out that the sudden change in behaviour was triggered by a TikTok movie on how men don't contribute to domestic duties and expect women to carry the burden. They followed a movement that kicked out men who refused to conform. They yelled out the window that they didn't need men in their lives and threw my belongings out. Victoria was clearly filming the entire event and everyone in the neighbourhood was watching. The whole incident was quite awkward. I didn't want to make too much noise about the whole thing, you know. I pretended everything was normal, huh? I had a very important deal with an investor and wanted to make a good impression and in the business world, 
even personal problems can turn investors off. So I slept in my office for a couple of days before moving to a nearby hotel so the employees wouldn't suspect anything. It's wrong. I despise others knowing about my personal life. And I did everything I could to keep it hidden. A few days later, I noticed that there had been a lot of purchases on the credit card I gave Evelyn. They had spent a large sum of money in only a few days. And I needed to put an end to their entire drama before these individuals bankrupted me and left me penniless in a matter of days. I blocked all credit cards I supplied. I stopped paying all of the household payments to teach them a lesson. Evelyn and Victoria were having the best time ever. They got everything they desired for themselves, yet they never tried to contact me. Little did they know that their small utopia was going to vanish. After three months and 90 days, everything was cut off. I turned off the internet, electricity and water, and I also stopped cooking. Leaving the bills unpaid was a price I had to pay to get them what they deserved, and they had spent all of their money on groceries and food. The card was also blocked. They couldn't do anything anymore, so they went to Evelyn's mother's place. They had to give up the comfort of my house for her tiny little dwelling, but they had no option. They lacked basic necessities for survival, and the winter was bitterly cold, and they couldn't survive without electricity. Let me tell you, they would not have been able to live without the internet. They continued blowing up my phone, so I just ignored them. They sent me a lot of sad texts and urged me to return home. I reminded them that they said they didn't need a mail, and Evelyn became irritated that I was ignoring her. She came to my job and used it to express her frustrations, and she made up a funny tale about how I abandoned them and refused to pay the bills, and she cried these fake crocodile tears, shouted, and even smashed a lot of stuff. And the entire drama was witnessed by my co-workers. Everything I loathed at work was happening right in front of my eyes, so I swiftly kicked her out. But the harm had been done to my reputation, and it was irreversible. She disseminated stories to everyone I knew who would listen, claiming that I was abusive. My investor, a lady, said I was filthy and refused to invest. My employees no longer saw me in the same light, and female employees were uncomfortable around me. My personal blunders began to have an effect on my business as well. I couldn't bear the thought of making Evelyn's ball cap anymore. I realised what needed to be done right away. I needed to cut off all contact with this toxic woman. At first, I couldn't bear the thought of another divorce, but she keeps revealing her actual goals, and things get worse. I chatted with my attorney, a 35-year-old guy, and explained all that had happened. After hours of lengthy conversation, we issued her a notice accompanied by divorce papers. And I only hope Evelyn and her daughter leave my life for good after this. I'm a little terrified of the drama that's about to unfold, but I'm going to have to face it. After all, I brought this on myself and I should have gotten to know her before marrying. The whole event is certainly going to leave a lifelong mark on my life. And I haven't been able to devote as much attention to the business lately. I might even seek professional therapy after this, and I believe that many people recover from a breakup or divorce, but I never expected it to be this hard. My insane wife and her even crazier teenage daughter after I served her with divorce papers on legal notice. After receiving the papers, Evelyn apologised profusely, but Victoria also apologised. No matter how much they apologised, I didn't budge. I realised I had to break out of this terrible marriage in any way possible. Evelyn tried all she could to get me back, and she utilised every strategy she saw on social media to make things even more dramatic. She posted funny subtales on social media. What I heard was ridiculous. She also issued me a notice. She alleged domestic violence against me. She falsely accused me of forcing her to work around the house until she collapsed from tiredness. She said that I abandoned her and did not pay the bills, allowing Evelyn and her daughter to leave the house. Her massive social media following. 
which was rapidly rising, was put against me. She also had a large number of supporters among her wild gang of followers. They encouraged her to press charges against me, telling the world how I abused and abandoned her. Nothing was in my favour, and it was true that we had a loveless marriage, which was dysfunctional. It occurred to me that I should have signed a prenup. Oh boy, it was too late for that now. She had scars and bruises, and I told the court that I was not to blame. Well, the scars were actually rather old, then caused the bruises herself at the time, and then threw me out to falsely accuse me. She established that I had not paid the bills, forcing them to live without any comforts. She stated that I forced her to become a housewife, then refused to pay for her and stopped her cards. I was my own downfall. Evelyn twisted every step I took to her advantage and things have gotten worse for me. She sought the house and the large amount of alimony and I had to file for domestic violence. The neighbours testified against me, claiming that there was excessive noise originating from my residence. Obviously, Evelyn was damaging things and yelling and they said I was screaming at Evelyn, resulting in an ugly brawl. Evelyn was to blame, yet everyone pointed their fingers at me. Evelyn claimed she kicked me out because she felt unsafe and everything that transpired became public. I was losing my case. I needed to turn the case and miraculously, I discovered an eyewitness, the cook. Ah, that's correct. The chef I hired witnessed Evelyn causing bruises on herself and overheard the mother-daughter combination discussing their plan to take over my house and money. She was prepared to testify in court. My living room contained camera footage showing her breaking things and me sleeping on the couch, but it didn't include audio. Victoria had posted a video of me being ejected on her page, which I used as evidence. The majority of my proof was incomplete, but it was all I had to work with. My case was weak, relying heavily on the cook. I remained hopeful, and fortunately, I won the lawsuit thanks to the cook I recruited. They examined Evelyn and discovered that her bruises were self-inflicted. The camera footage showed how she walked around damaging things, and it was evident that I had not abandoned her. The caption on Victoria's page stated that they kicked me out due to a video. Evelyn was forced to concede that the domestic violence charges were untrue. Everything went in my favour. Evelyn's lies were exposed and everyone now knew the truth. Her stupidity had cost her the opportunity to live a wealthy lifestyle with me and provide a better future for her daughter. She had to pay for the damage to my home as well as all outstanding bills and she had to compensate me for all of the problems she created. Even though everything turned out well, I know I'll never be able to recover from this. I feel worse than before, but I have gained a lot of understanding from this. And I learned such an important lesson the hard way. But the damage to my reputation is irreversible. Even Avery is probably aware of the entire affair by now. I've decided to attempt to move on from this, although it may take a while and I've chosen to give myself more time to reconnect with my interests and old pals. I hope everything goes well for me. The entire contact really helped me relieve the weight of my emotions in the age of cancellation culture. I definitely need to have a good reputation, otherwise no one will work with or even with me. A lot of you wondered why I didn't just hire a maid to avoid controversy. Yeah, I could have done that but I believe it is critical to give people a purpose. I mean, Victoria went to school, but I can't let Evelyn lounge around all day and waste my money. She wanted something to do, and the more busy she got, the less interested she was in my business. Domestic violence claims had a wider impact than simply myself. Many people argued that I was genuinely abusive. After all, this was my second divorce, and I had married hurriedly. Some people left after hearing the drama, while others were highly supportive of me and couldn't believe the lies Evelyn had spun. I assumed it was the end of Evelyn and Victoria for good, and I would be free of all the turmoil in my life. Oh boy, 
Evelyn had propagated the rumour that I had bought off the lawyers, and she said that she was compelled to undergo a medical examination that produced false results and that it was self-inflicted, which was a lie. That is clearly not how it works. But a lot of stupid people believed her, and her gang of false people was determined to make my life miserable. They began to harass me in a variety of ways, including by tossing eggs at my residence, bombarding my phone with hate messages, and even phoning my work number and emails. Nobody did all of this up front. They always remained secret. I couldn't do anything but seek assistance from the cops. It all came to an end after a while. But Evelyn had managed to rally more support than ever before. My stakeholders were unhappy since the product my company produced was primarily used by women. Evelyn even gave an interview to the local newspaper, which was published. The entire story was full of lies about me, and I needed to do something about it. I went to my lawyer again to deal with this idiotic jerk of a woman. He indicated that we may take her to court for defamation. I established that she was circulating fake charges and stories solely to malign me. Show the video she posted against me. I had complained about being harassed by several ladies over this, and I definitely won the case because she was openly doing all of this and couldn't prove me wrong. She has to pay me more money or face jail time. I urged her to back off and that we could continue doing this, or she could keep the money for herself and we could go our separate ways and live in peace. People still did not believe me, and everyone assumed I was only winning cases because of the quote, power of money. I found myself labelled as a spouse abuser, tarnishing my reputation and hindering my ability to focus on my business, which suffered a decline. The damage inflicted on my name was irreversible, and I could only hope for the storm to pass and the chatter to subside. However, I remained steadfast in my principles and managed to contain the spread of rumours, minimising the impact on my professional endeavours. Fortunately, my business remained largely unaffected as I had always maintained a discreet personal life, allowing my work to speak for itself. I fervently desired to put the chapter involving Evelyn Victoria and their tumultuous behaviour behind me, hoping for no further disruptions. Although direct communication with Evelyn and her daughter ceased, they continued to propagate falsehoods to others, perpetuating the saga. However, Life gradually resumed its course, and I paid scant attention to my assistant, Clark, until one occasion when she brought an update regarding Evelyn. Listening intently, I learned that Evelyn had been ensnared in a scandal involving one of her friend's husbands, sparking widespread uproar. Unfazed by the repercussions, Evelyn's pursuit of affluent companionship persisted, despite being embroiled in multiple extramarital affairs. Her actions drew widespread condemnation, with social media platforms becoming inundated with criticism, prompting her to deactivate her accounts. Meanwhile, Victoria grappled with conflicting emotions, torn between supporting her mother and condemning her actions. Consequently, she faced ostracization from various online communities, as individuals distanced themselves due to the chaos surrounding her family. Left to face the consequences of her actions alone, Evelyn encountered financial hardship, prompting her mother to pressure her to seek alternate arrangements. The reft of financial support and grappling with mounting responsibilities. She lamented missed opportunities, regretting the lucrative employment she once enjoyed in my household. Her financial woes worsened and she traveled around begging for money, eventually finding her way to me. She found a way to reach me, despite the fact that I had blocked her everywhere and made sure she stayed away from me. I took full advantage of it, offering to give her money on the condition that she tell everyone the truth. Well, she was at her wit's end. Reluctantly, she agreed to my terms. Taking to social media, she set the record straight, denying the allegations of domestic violence and asserting that it was they who had ousted me from our home. In exchange for a modest sum, she vowed never to cross my path again. 
Despite her efforts, she struggled to regain footing in her modeling career after being ousted once more. Hindered by her advancing age, despite her youthful appearance, she faced an uphill battle to re-establish herself in the industry. Compounded by Victoria's rebellious teenage years, marked by overspending and late-night escapades with friends, Evelyn found herself hemorrhaging money. Balancing household responsibilities, her career, and the challenges of parenting Victoria alone, Evelyn was stretched thin. Though their lifestyle was no longer as opulent as before, I believe Evelyn learned from her mistakes. Reactions in the comment section varied. Some criticised Thomas for seemingly capitulating too easily, questioning how he could allow someone to enter his home, displace him and lock him out without a fight. Others commended his approach, viewing it as a pragmatic means to avoid escalating the situation and risking his business and reputation. However, as some commenters noted, karma eventually caught up with Evelyn and Victoria, delivering its own brand of justice in due time.